Joining us is Professor Ui Eng Yong, Deputy Director of the Emerging Infectious Diseases Program at Duke NUS Medical School. Welcome again, Prof. Could you explain uh, why COVID-19 vaccines like Pfizer's would be effective against you know, the virus's new variants? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, the vaccines that we are, um, that have been licensed, like those from Pfizer as well as uh, Moderna eventually, um, the, 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 the vaccines are constructed by, make, by using the entire spike gene. So it's not just one part of the, the protein, but the, uh, it's one, not one part of the, the gene that encodes for the whole protein, but the entire thing itself. In other words, for um, the virus to be able to evolve to the extent that it can completely evade the, the immune system, which will be attacking the, the, the protein from all sorts of different angles and against the whole thing, it must undergo quite a substantial number of changes, right? So if you think about it, it's like using a key uh, to get into a door, right? The key must first of all slot uh, into the lock and it must fit. Um, and next thing it has the key needs to do, or at least the person put using the key needs to now turn the key so that you now unlock the door. So, so the mutations that we're finding with the UK variant, the South Africa variant and all that are mostly focused around, or concentrated around the very tip of the key. And so, so the idea therefore is that it fits the lock better, right? But there, there are also other parts of the spike protein that are important and that's important for turning the lock. And so if you, because of the way the vaccines are made, we'll also make antibodies that now block the, the the way uh, the block the the spike protein from turning, and if it cannot turn, it cannot unlock, right? So then the virus cannot get in. But that's just the antibody perspective of uh, the immune response. Our immune response is also composed of um, uh, killer cells, right, uh, or a thing called T cells, and the T cells basically now peer inside uh, the the, in the our cells to know which ones are infected and which ones are not. So in the event that you know, the antibodies are not sufficient to protect against infection and that gets through, then our T cells will then still come and be able to scan and identify which ones are infected and which ones are not. And then you'll get rid of those that are infected and prevent the virus from spreading in the body. So RNA vaccines, as well as those vaccines that like AstraZeneca, uh, adenoviral vector vaccines. In a, so these, are, these vaccines all are delivered into our body and then our body then makes the spike protein. This form of vaccine will produce both antibodies as well as um, killer T cells. Uh, and so there's redundancy in our immune response. And that's why it's very hard for the virus to be able to mutate to such an extent that it would escape uh, you know, all the antibodies as well as the T cell response. So it, that's highly, highly unlikely. Right. Uh, Professor, we understand that uh, you received your COVID-19 vaccine last week. How was your experience? Right. Yeah, I, I got my, my first dose last week. Uh, it was uh, highly uneventful, I guess, uh, is the way to put it. Um, I had a sore left arm for a, a day or so, but that was about it and nothing else. 